need to just have that little bit of reassurance. That's why I'm going over today. Unlike the rest of the year, during the brief weeks of high summer, there's almost zero unemployment on Scilly. With the place awash with holidaymakers, it's all hands to the pumps. In fact, in the last few years, some of the hotels in this remotest outpost of Western Europe have been relying on seasonal staff from right across the other side of the continent. Up by the church, there's one of St. Mary's main hotels. We are quite busy, so next week we have just only two rooms available. This summer there are staff from Poland, Hungary and Portugal. OK, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. The maitre d, Mimi, is from Bulgaria. Is having a with your meal? Yes, it's delicious. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Wonderful. She works closely with the chef in charge of the kitchens, Phil. He's from Birmingham. Did Mimi say six more to come in, yeah? They met as seasonal workers, fell in love and married. When their daughter Annie arrived last year, they decided they wanted to make Silly their permanent home. Oh, a half a sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> no, and a no sandcastle. All my family, they always say, you, you, you go to Silly for a couple of holidays and it gets under your skin and you just feel like you have to go back, you know, to come and live here like we did. It obviously got under our skin enough to want to come back here. <laughs> That's better. Oh, well, it's just the lifestyle over here, you know, the weather for starters. <laughs> yeah. You get a lot more hot weather and sunshine than anywhere else. You get a lot more rain as well, but Very it swings peaceful. around about, I suppose, the peace and quiet. I mean, we are still only young, and you know, I think we've, we, we did all our clubbing days and all that a long time ago, <laughs> oh, yeah. even though we are... We, we, can we can still party like the best of them, but <laughs> we, like, we, do, we do like the peace and quiet over here. For me, personally, I like the community. On the mainland, we lived for six months and I didn't really make any friends. When here, you just make friends yeah. and people are so much open and so much more... They, they trust each other much more. And I think that's what is made it for me. It's just so much easier for me to communicate and make friends. And it's funny, it's just a feeling, I think, a feeling of um, you belong to something or yeah. somewhere. What an idyllic <laughs> lifestyle you guys lead. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too it bad. Good. Will yeah. you ever stop grinning? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it all seems perfect. But in fact, although their friends don't know it, there's one thing missing which would make Phil and Mimi's life here complete. Come on. That's it. Up at the airport, the Reverend Steve Wiles arriving from Penzance. And his old friend David Easton is there to meet him. My brother. Hello, welcome. All right, how are you? Yes, great. Good, good to see you. Have you had a good trip over? We have. Wonderful, Excellent. thank you very much. Yes. yes, yes. Well, it's my last time in this month with you. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for your support. It's been great. So how are you feeling about the move now? Oh, well, it's like standing on a railway station, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the train to come and all your luggage is around you and you're just glad when it arrives, really. Well, I'd like to pray for the removal and for mm, all the changes yeah. and preparation for Aberystwyth mm. and yeah, thank for you. all your folks and things. Great. Okay. I thought I'd just read some words from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord's help. Then he listened to me and heard my cry. He pulled me out of a dangerous pit, out of the deadly quicksand. He set me safely on a rock and made me secure. Amen. Amen. Not far from her house, Heike the vet has been busy getting to know her new rescue dog, Jasper. He's arrived on Scilly after a previous life in a big city, and Heike is discovering he's not exactly well trained. Can't you bring it a bit closer? It's very important that Heike can have confidence in Jasper's obedience. She wants to introduce him to everyone at the upcoming annual Scilly dog show one of the highlights of the island's summer calendar. Oh, dear. Hang on, I'll have a look. 
dogs are a big feature of almost every aspect of life on Scilly, so the dog shows become a major event. This year, even the legendary boatman Fraser Hicks has volunteered his services. Fraser, there's a rumour flying around that you're judging the dog shows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're, we've true? been asked to do it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so we've got to be a bit careful, I suppose, a bit diplomatic at how the uh, judging goes, isn't it? I've heard it's the most unpopular job on the island. Well, <laughs> because whatever you do, you're going to upset most people. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's always somebody you're going to offend, isn't there? So, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy. Well, I'm sure we'll cope. Of course, there could be that you, you've been chosen because nobody else is prepared to do it. Well, that's a possibility, I suppose. But I, I'd like to think it was because we, they think that we're good judges of character and we'll uh, we'll give a fair a fair description of uh, uh, is that true? what's happened. Well, I, well, I'm not too bad a judge of character, I think, generally. <laughs> Get it right most of the time. <laughs> no! No! Hike is in two minds about whether Jasper's really up to his first public appearance. No! Ever since he got here a few days ago, he's shown unpredictable and aggressive behaviour, like when he's given food. Yeah, Why is he doing yeah. that all of a sudden? It's because I've given him this pork, this dry pork skin. Oh, and now he's being protected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I missed that, sorry. So, I should leave him to it. Well, the problem is, you know, he'll think the living room is his room, but I want oh, to have his true. attitude outside. Come here, come. On the other side of the island, David's boss, Steve Wilde, is busy out and about. Morning. Trying to gauge the current temperature of David's congregation. So what is the mood of the people at the moment? Very mixed, very, very mixed. Obviously, it's feeling a little bit tender at the moment because the time is coming for David to go and people in the community are feeling very upset and, and what have you. But we, we have all decided we've got to put it behind us and move on and get on with the job that we're supposed to be doing. He's made a big impression on this island and um, he can take that away with him and uh, it must be very special to him. On the mainland, news of a minister's dismissal may well pass most people by. But in this small and remote community, the decision to remove David against the wish of the majority has been hugely controversial. That's it, I think. Thank you very much. Because you're busy this afternoon, I thought they'd be all on the beach or something. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks a lot. Yeah. Cheers, bye. Thanks, bye. It has been a very difficult time for us, really. There's a lot more in the story than uh, sometimes people understand, so I think that's part of the problem, isn't it? It's been quite difficult, obviously, having a period from, I don't know, about nine months from knowing the decision to, with David still being here, that's been quite a difficult period, but um, I suppose when we get to the summer season that it does, time does fly by, and, um, well, I'm looking forward to a new start and a new minister and try and get some of the, the old issues behind us. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, God is here, God loves this place, you know, there is hope. Hello, Hello, Steve. Oh. I saw you coming. <laughs> I saw you coming. Nice to see you. Well, it's good to... And the garden's looking beautiful. <laughs> Welcome. Come in. Come in. Thank you. As well as wanting to heal the deep divisions, Steve's also here to spread the news about his new appointment, something he spent a lot of time recently worrying about. The minister he's found to replace David Easton is someone who's currently in charge of a congregation in Norfolk a man who knows nothing of the Isles of Scilly or island life at all, but seems keen to learn. He was very open to go anywhere to serve God. He's the type of man who would say, I'll bloom where I'm planted. Now, this is your decision, your appointment. How do you know you've got it right if he doesn't know anything about island life? Well, I don't know that I got it right. And I'm just saying my prayers that it is going to be right and it's going to be what we'd call a really good match. The thing is, I'm new in this job, and it did seem to me and to the local stewards that his profile, the things he had to say about himself and his style of ministry would go down very well in this community. The Methodists on the island are the biggest Christian group, so it is a big responsibility, and we've a lot, lot to lose if I was to get this wrong. But I, 
I feel that we've got the right man. By any standards, the remote Isles of Scilly is always going to be a very difficult appointment. And being such a small and unusual place, it won't take long for Steve to hear if he's made the wrong decision. One of the biggest social events of the entire summer season is getting underway in the middle of the main island of St. Mary's. The annual dog show was started by the Silly Vet Support Group as a way of raising funds and offering solidarity to the island vet. It's the height of the season and a busy time of year for most of the locals, but nonetheless people come from all the five inhabited islands to show their support for Heike. They know she's been having a particularly tough time recently. Like everyone here, Fraser Hicks knows that without a vet, they'd all be in big trouble. Judges are deliberating. It sounds like it's a very hard decision. He's given up a lucrative afternoon's boating to do the judging with his wife, Julie, and is determined to make the afternoon a success. And in first place... No, Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe. Phoebe is a pretty sweet today. How are you getting on, Fraser? OK, yeah, it's all going very well, I think. Yeah, it's all... that's his shirt. Yeah, that's it, yeah, the change of clothes, that's it. And a shave as well, which is always a good idea, yeah. So, are you upsetting anybody, or is it all...? Well, I think it's all going reasonably smoothly here at the moment. Very difficult, though, you know, if you've got to look around and choose the best dog, it's not easy, is it? So, yeah, quite a task. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're on the waggiest tail or something like that. The waggiest tail. Yeah, and then they got the dog lookalikes as well, which is uh, that's going to be a bit delicate as well, isn't it? <laughs> gonna, gonna have to be careful with that one. So <laughs> waggiest tail, and that would be at the end. You need to stand up so we can see that waggiest tail. Heike herself arrives late. After much agonising, she's decided to bite the bullet and bring along Jasper. Ooh. Although she's hoping he'll make friends rather than win competitions. You give your dog quite a bit of gun. The spark is not worth the spite. Almost every single animal and human here is a client, so Heike knows her reputation is on the line. <laughs> Down at the St. Mary's Hall Hotel, Phil and Mimi are hard at work. Two beds in the way, one John Dory. Over recent weeks, they've been thinking long and hard about what they want to make their life in Silly complete. Uh, yeah, my daughter Annie, uh, she's 14 months old now. And we've been meaning to get her christened uh, for quite some time. Um, Mimi comes from quite a religious family, really, back in Bulgaria. Um, so it's very important to Mimi, and obviously if it's important to Mimi, it's important to me as well, so... I am quite religious. My mum is quite religious. And um, as she always said, you should have your baby christened because God loves them and God protects them. And I don't know, it's, it's just the way they brought me up to believe in the good, in, in good people, in good spirits, believe in good in God and that something good will happen if you are good to everybody else. So I want Annie to be brought the same way. So we a duck, medium and one chicken. They've delayed seeking a christening for Annie because so far it's proved impossible to get the two families together. But now Mimi's parents have said they can come over from Bulgaria at the same time as Phil's can come from the Midlands. I always said, your family will come over and my family will come over. I've tried to arrange it that many times because we've been together for five years and it never happened. never imagined I'm going to leave my country and my parents to live so far apart. And uh, for them to be able to come over and see it, be present, and yes, it is, it is very emotional. <laughs> Up at the dog show, much to Heike's delight, things are working out much better than expected. Jasper. Jasper. And he's a, he's a Welsh collie. Yeah, he's 16 months old, and he's got a very long tail. Almost as though he knows which side his bread is buttered, 
Jasper the rescued dog's behaving like an angel. What's he called? Uh, Jasper. Jasper. I'm very friendly. <laughs> Jasper's exemplary behaviour in not letting down Heike in public is a huge relief. So he's been very well behaved? Yeah. Very. Not been aggressive? No, not at all. Not, so, not, well, not one bit. So that's a relief. Yeah. I think he's very good with other dogs. And if they are aggressive, some of them are, he just sort of, you know, goes away. He looks so relaxed and happy. Me? Yeah. Well, More I so am. than I've seen you for weeks. Oh, thank you. I'm usually actually happy. Normal. My, that's my not, normal. Not so much recently. Uh, no, uh, it had a, a slight um, problems now and then, but we have to look forward, not not backwards. Yes. Good. I'm glad you're having a nice time. Thank you. <laughs> so after a traumatic few months for Heike, things seem to be working out for the island vet, at least for the moment. Bye. Meanwhile, a very long way away from Silly. And some extraordinary scenes are unfolding. This is, in fact, a reenactment of a battle scene from the American War of Independence in 1776. It's a little slice of history taking place in the normally tranquil market town of Thetford in Norfolk, as part of the celebrations for the 200th anniversary of the passing of the town's most famous son, Thomas Paine. Paine's groundbreaking book about democracy, The Rights of Man, was instrumental in the USA's break from Britain and helped frame the American Constitution. One man in the crowd, Charlie Gibbs, is a great admirer of Thomas Paine. He was born in Thetford in the 18th century, went to what was then New England, to the States, and he became a, a, a very well-known and a very important civil, civil rights campaigner. So uh, that is the link with Thetford, yeah. It's quite a celebration. It is quite something, yeah. yeah just every day we see uh, cannons uh, let off in the streets of Thetford, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Gibbs is a very well-known figure in Thetford, although to most townsfolk he's better known as the Reverend Charlie Gibbs, Methodist minister. John records Jesus using the word love no less than 31 times. I am the way. Now Charlie's gearing up to leave here and head 300 miles west with his wife to a new home he knows virtually nothing about, and his new appointment as minister to the Isles of Scilly. As soon as we heard, we went to the library and got a book out, and uh, we were very impressed, really. I don't think I'd, I'd grasp what a small area it is and how small the island we'll be living on is. And I found that, I think, a bit of, um, you know, to get my head around that, what's it going to be like to live on an island where you sort of can't go more than a mile and a half in any direction sort of thing. So uh, that was a bit of a surprise, yes. So how come you're going to the Isles of Scilly? Well, when it came to moving, um, we were asked where we would consider going, and, and I, I, I always like to sort of say, well, we'll go wherever we're sent. It's exciting, and, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the excitement of it all. I'm looking forward to meeting new people, and I'm very hopeful that... Um, It'll be a great benefit to me and a great benefit to the church and, and, and a great benefit to the kingdom of God, really. So we're, we're pleased, yes. You'll be spending a lot of time on boats and on the water. Well, so they say. <laughs> Do you get seasick? I've no idea. I don't, think, I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't ever remember being seasick, but I've not done a lot of travelling on boats. A lot of people get very sick on the Salonian. Yeah, yes, I've heard that, yeah. That's yeah. how you're arriving? Yes, well, <laughs> what will be, will be. <laughs> Charlie's ticket is booked. He's due to arrive on the islands in about four weeks' time. Oh, you're getting heavy. <laughs> Back on Silly, and Phil and Mimi have managed to get an appointment at the manse. They know David from seeing him out and about, but have no idea whether he'll agree to christen little Annie. 
hope he doesn't ask me if I go to church every Sunday. All oh, right, I better get this right because there's lots of different ways of spelling, Annie. They've barely been there five minutes before one character in the room starts to dominate proceedings. Annie. That's the Bulgarian way. A N I. Does she have another name? Christina. C H R I S T I N A. And, um. Annie. Okay. The truth is that the minister was expecting an easy to manage babe in arms. As a bachelor, David's not so used to handling toddlers. Oh, I'm sitting here long. <laughs> she's certainly at that stage when she's got her hands in everything. It's a very tricky age to baptise a child, actually. She's got the lid off that pen. I usually, uh, with the child, uh, take the child around the church and um, introduce her to everybody as well. And sing a song sometimes yeah. with her, so we'll take her around the church. Um, it's um, a bit of an awkward age sometimes, isn't it, really? <laughs> but we shall see whether you like it or not. You'll be a good girl, won't you? I think if everybody's singing, she'll keep still and be amazed yes. by the fact that everybody's singing. Fine. <laughs> David needs to ask Phil and Mimi some serious questions. They aren't Methodists, and they aren't even regular churchgoers. So why do you want to have uh, Annie baptised anyway? My family, my mum my mm. and my side mm. of the family do really like um, the child to be christened. Yeah. So you said you, you weren't brought up a Catholic in No, we are, we're Christian. I, it's I, orthodox. I, orthodox. Would you say, would you say Greek I orthodox? didn't know that we are orthodox, really, but Christian. Mm. I was christened when I was 13. I already mm. um, had quite mm. good knowledge about the Bible. Mm. But she's so small, so mm. not, I just really wanted a baptism. Mm. And maybe in some sort of older age, she can mm. choose mm. what religion she believes yes. in. Yes, great. OK, right. Yeah, the 26th is the Sunday. Yeah, it'd have to be then or nothing, I think, really, if you wanted I me to do it. I think that sounds good. If that I'm is good news. Really We're getting a bit restless here, aren't you? No. OK, well, why don't okay. we uh, arrange to meet again sometime and then it's just the, the three of us can get together and we yeah. can talk about this a bit more and it'll be easier for you. Phil and Mimi are relieved that David's agreed to do the service. But there's another problem that's really been giving them sleepless nights. Bye. Bye. Phil and Mimi's parents will be coming for the baptism on Scilly from opposite ends of Europe. Not only have they never met, neither couple speak a word of the other's language. We won't really know how they're going to get on until they meet. A small thing like a language barrier. <laughs> they can't talk, so... <laughs> I'm really scared. I'm I scared. am really scared. Also in the next programme... Plans by Glyn the Busman to launch his new rock and roll band with a high profile gig hit the rocks. Nerves are setting in. A couple of the members of the band don't think we're ready. If we cancel it now, we're going to be a laughing stock. And I. I uh, <laughs> yeah. And the island ladies gather to finalise plans for a rare treat for the minister's big farewell meal. Yeah. When did you last have a Chinese meal on the Isles of Scilly? Five years ago. It was the last time you the had a Chinese meal? The last time I had a Chinese meal, meal on Scilly. I don't think I've ever. Oh, I did, yes. I remember Steve used to go across and get them when he had the plane, but that was years ago. It must yeah. be 15, yeah. 20 years ago, I think. Yeah.